Well, good morning and happy Sunday morning to you. We're welcoming you to our Sunday broadcast and we're getting ready to get into the word again to see what God has to say as he continues to talk to us about judgment must first begin at the house of God. And I am excited to share this word with you today. Uh, we've been talking a lot about judgment and how Jesus is going to judge the world and the church. And we've been sharing some really eye-opening uh, information to you. But today I want to share with you why Jesus is so adamant about what he has done for us through offering himself up as our sacrifice and why then it makes him so adamant about being the righteous judge. And we talked about how he is going to judge the church now we're going to see why he has to judge the world. Now, we also shared with you last week as we talked to you about how the Lord Jesus placed in the body of Christ five ministry gifts, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, teacher. And we kind of shared with you what those particular offices represented and what their functions were. And the reason why Jesus gave these functions and these offices to the body of Christ was to prepare the body of Christ so that we would be able to live in a lost and dying and evil and wicked world. And so today what we're going to be doing as we get into the word is we're going to share with you the condition of the world and why it was important for Jesus to give the body of Christ these ministry gifts to prepare us so that we would be able to live in this world and not become a part of the world since we had been delivered from the world. And he was going to give us these ministry gifts in order to prepare us and to train us so that we could become effective in walking in the authority and power of God. I want you to understand as we get into the word of God today that there is evil in this world and the wickedness in this world is increasing on a daily basis. And I want you to know that it is imperative for you to walk in the revelation of these teachings because God wants you to understand and he wants you to see some things. And what he wants you to see is the fact that without him, and without his power, you cannot be successful in this world because Satan is in the world exercising dominion and power over all of those who refuse to follow Jesus. And even the ones that decide to follow Jesus, we still have to exercise all of the power that God has given us in order for us to be effective against the devil. So let's get into the word. But before we do that, let's pray and ask this father to bless this teaching so that you will be blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you right now that you would bless this word that's about to go forward. And I pray that you would allow the hearts of everyone that is listening or watching this, 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 this broadcast, that their hearts would be good ground and that, Father, it will be sown into by the word of God and that it would bring forth an unlimited full return in our lives. And I pray right now that our great teacher, who is the Holy Ghost, would rise up big on the inside of us and cause us to walk in the supernatural power of God, which would then take this engrafted word and save and continue to save our souls. So we thank you in advance for what you're about to do. I also pray, Father, for the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the manifestations of the gifts of healings to take place in the lives of those that are listening and are watching this broadcast that even as the word is going forth, I'm sending the word of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders so that it would be manifesting in the lives of those that have need of those areas uh, to be fixed in their lives. And so I praise you right now for what you're about to do. And I thank you because you are the God of all heaven and all earth and all creation. And we give you alone all the praise in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're looking forward to getting into the word of God today. Let's talk about this now. We're going to be talking about the condition of the world. The world is in a state right now 
where it is so wicked and the people in the world who do not have the love of God are under tremendous attack to be rebellious against God. Let's go to the book of first Timothy chapter four, and we're going to see what the word of God says concerning the condition of the world. Now in first Timothy chapter four, verse one, the word says this. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and condemn and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So we find here a very powerful revelation of what the times are. Now you have to understand this was written some thousands of years ago, but look at how accurate it is as, the, as it describes the times. For he said in the latter times, these were going to be the conditions in the world. And we surely see, you have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is exactly what is going on right now in the times in which we're living. And so you have to understand that God is speaking directly to you and I, and he wants us to understand that we must understand the condition of the world and then appropriate the available powers that he has given us, the available authority that he has given us so that we can exercise those powers and authorities and live an overcoming victorious life in the world. Not just so that we won't be affected by the world, but that we can go into the world and preach the gospel to all creatures and win many of them through the ministry of reconciliation, bringing them back into reconciliation with God. We we're not going to get them all because many people are not going to listen. And we and, and this verse begins to show us exactly that. So let's break this down and see what God is saying to us now. It says now the spirit, first of all, it says the spirit of God speaketh expressly. So the, the Holy Spirit is exact. He is speaking expressly. He is speaking demonstratively. He is telling you this is exactly what is going to happen. So the Holy Spirit is expressly speaking that in the latter times, in the latter times, some shall depart, shall depart from the faith. Now, the faith, the faith. When the Bible talks about the faith here, it's talking about the faith of Christianity, the word of God. It is talking about the way that we serve God according to the scriptures. That's what it's talking about, the faith. That means that this is the Christian faith. This is God's word on how to be born again and then how to follow God and walk in his power and his authority. So when it's talking about the faith, it's talking about the faith that we have in God and the way that God wants us to live. All right. Now, let's get back into this. So it says that um, it says some shall depart from the faith. So they're going to depart from the faith. Now, the word depart means to withdraw oneself, to forsake something, to desert something, to cease from something, to retire from something, or to just stand off. Because this word is the word apostemi, and it comes from apo meaning from, and histemi meaning to stand or to place. So when it's talking about uh, some shall depart from the faith. We have two, we have two forms of, of, of departing from the faith. The first form of departing from the faith is people will withdraw or remove themselves, forsake, desert, or retire, or cease from the faith. Now, what that is talking about is that in the latter days, you're going to see, and I'm going to see people who were once walking in the faith, were once walking with God, 
But the Bible says they're going to withdraw. They're going to pull away from. They're going to come turn away and pull back from and withdraw themselves from the way that God has called us to live. And this is the pressure that the devil is putting on people who are Christians. This is why God gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the work. What did he give them to for the for the watch this now for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry that we all come into the unity of the faith. Why? Because the devil has come with an, an a laser focused attack against Christians and he wants to get Christians to back off from the faith, to withdraw themselves, to withhold themselves from living the way God wants them. He wants them to just actually turn away from it. Now, I want you to understand that the same way you came into the kingdom is the way that you can exit the kingdom. Now, God did not force you into his kingdom. He gave you an opportunity to come into his kingdom and to accept Jesus and then to make a decision that you were going to serve him for the rest of your life. Now, that is a decision that you made and based upon your decision that you were going to accept Jesus as your master, your Lord and your savior. Then God accepted you into his kingdom. Now, the same way that you got in is the same way that you've got to stay in, because if you decide to withdraw or pull back or renege on your decision to serve God, you can walk away from the kingdom of God. And this is what the scripture is showing us here if we look again and see what it says here it says that some are going to depart from the faith they're going to remove themselves they're going to forsake it desert it they're going to cease from it why because pressures are going to come upon people and they're going to pull themselves away from the faith and this is what god wants you and i to see now we see this happening in the church and how we see this happening in the church is this. Satan has been very subtle at times, but then he's also been very just bold at times. And what he is doing now is you remember the, the warning that Jesus gave us. And that warning was love, not the world, neither the things that are in the world for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It is not of the father, but it is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof. So in essence, what God is saying to us and what Jesus was saying to us is don't get yourself caught up in the love of the things that are in the world. Because the things that are in the world will captivate you if you focus on them and you give your affections over to them and you place your value on them. They will captivate you. They will catch you up in its trap and will cause you to withdraw yourself from the, the way that God wants you to live or as, in essence, withdraw yourself from the faith. And when you do that, you end up getting the results of pulling away from God, which is death, which is hell, which is the lake of fire. And so the devil is working extremely hard to pull people out of the kingdom of God. And this is why he has introduced so much carnality into the church. He has affected the church in every area. He has affected the church in sexuality. He has brought uh, sexual changes in the church that the word of God expressly forbids. And so we find now that the devil has come into the church with homosexuality and he has brought that into the church and watch this now, and, and the church is accepting this as a lifestyle and accepting this as what Jesus accepts when the word of God specifically says that this is not the will of God. Homosexuality is a sin. It is a sin just like any other sin, and it has to be repented of, but people can be delivered from it as well. And so we need to understand that. But the devil has brought this into the church and has caused many people in the church to back off and to shrink away from standing on the truth of God so that we can be what we would call spiritually politically correct. And you can't be spiritually politically correct. You have to be word correct and you have to be word strong. And this is where we as Christians have to understand. Now, God uses 
his word to bring people into the kingdom. We don't use the word to beat people over the head like a baseball bat and, and condemn people. We give them the word so that God can show them the error of their ways and show them how to get out and how he can bring them into the kingdom and have a beautiful life. And this is what happens here. So we, we've brought homosexuality, homosexuality and accepted it into the church. We have brought in drinking into the church and drunkenness into the church. We've brought in carnality, worldly music, worldly dancing into the church. We've brought in uh, worldly dressing into the church. We've brought in worldly speech into the church. We've brought in worldly ways of treating people into the church. And what has happened is when Satan continues to bring these things into the church and to affect the church, because the Bible says a little leaven will leaven the whole lump. And when he begins to bring bring these things into the church, sometimes subtly and sometimes openly, what happens is the people of, in the body of Christ begin to accept these things as spiritually normal and they begin to walk away from the things of God. What I like to see, uh, 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 reference this as is I, I, I liken this to the spirit of vertigo, spiritual vertigo. And what vertigo is, is when a person is going in a direction in a straight line, but when vertigo sets in, vertigo causes that person to begin to go as they walk in a straight line, they begin to veer off of the straight line just just a little and a little at a time and and they're they're not understanding and recognizing recognizing they're not walking straight anymore because they're walking more in an angle and they're going away from the straightness and the further they go the further away they get from the place where they're supposed to be this is what's happening in the church we are moving away from the word of god we're moving away from god's truth and, and as we continue to do that, we find ourselves walking in and accepting things that God's word never said it, he would accept. But we are now accepting it and, and justifying it in the word of God. And this is what is happening into the body of Christ. This is what's going on now. And this is how Satan is operating. And this is how he's moving uh, in order to infect the church by causing people to love the world and then also to love money. But the Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And while some have coveted after, they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And so people have loved money so much that they will begin to sin to get money. And in doing so, the Bible says they're piercing themselves through with many sorrows. Now, we need to understand that all of this is being uh, launched against the church itself and people in the church are not taking heed to the teachings of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Now, when I say that, I'm talking about the true apostle, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, because there are false ones. And so what has happened is not only has the devil infiltrated the church with these doctrines, but he's also caused leaders in the church who are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to accept those doctrines as, as correct and truth. And they have begun to teach that to the people of God and have infected the people of God who are following their leadership. And this has come into the church. So the devil has come in and has effectively uh, attacked the whole worship service of God. He has come in through the music ministry and infiltrated secular music music and music that does not glorify God and has brought that into the church so that that is being sung as songs of praise and songs of worship and God's worship is being corrupted and all of this has been brought into the church for the express purpose of getting people so depressed and so spiritually depressed and so spiritually frustrated that they begin to pull away and turn away and back off and withdraw from God because or withdraw from the faith because they're finding now that their power has been abrogated by them accepting these false uh, revelations of the devil. They are not having authority over the devil. They become frustrated because now they're not able to handle the spiritual pressure that is being put up on them. And therefore they're withdrawing from the kingdom of God and withdrawing from the word of God. This is what the Bible says in, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4. 
So we find that some are departing, not everybody, but some are just actually withdrawing themselves and removing themselves from the faith. Wow, this is terrible because here you have you have come into eternal life. Now you're walking away from eternal life. And this is terrible because the devil wants this. Now, there's another meaning here as well as when we're talking about departing from the faith. And the second meaning of this is when they they stand away from believing or they stand or they set themselves to stand away from the truth. These are the people who are not saved. These are the people who don't have a relationship with God. And he has so infected their minds and so captivated their minds that they have actually set themselves to stand off from and stand away from the gospel, from the way that God wants us to live. And they are actually stepped standing apart from God's word, standing off from it and will not receive it. They reject it in the face. They reject it full force and they will not receive it. And so they look at what is preached and they re deny it and they reject it. They don't even try to accept it. They just back off from it and they have just completely rejected the word of God. These are the people whose minds have been made up that God's word is not for them and they're not going to uh, adhere to it. They stand off from it. These are some of the people that Jesus talked about saying, seeing you won't see and hearing you won't hear because you have set your heart not to follow me. Therefore, I have allowed you to give in, to be given over to that stubborn, that rebellious and that stoned spirit that causes you to back off from the word of God and to stand off from it and stand aloof from it and, ex and, and act as if you don't have need of it. Those that, that stand off from the word of God, listen to what I'm saying. Those that stand off, stand back, re refuse to receive it are full of pride. Because pride causes a person to feel like they don't need to change. Pride causes a person to feel like they are already great within themselves. And so when they don't receive the word, they back off. It's because they don't believe they need it. And when they act like that, what takes place is that pride overtakes them. Now, the Bible says something very interesting about pride. The Bible said pride goeth before a fall. Therefore, every person that stands off and stands aloof from the word and refuses to give in to the word, refuses to, to receive the word, re refuses to accept the word and accept the faith and give in to the, the, the rulership of God in their lives, they are going to fall. And their fall is going to be a fall from the life that they're living now all the way into eternal damnation. That is going to be the depths of their fall. And this is what the Lord is trying to get us to see here. So he's trying to show us now the condition that the world is in and because he's going to judge the world. And you know how we found out how he's going to judge. He's not going to be judging with mercy. He's going to be judging with righteousness and truth. And so those that are living like this, they're going to fall under that tremendous judgment of God. And you can see why Jesus is going to judge them now, because this group of Christians have mixed the word of God and mixed God's uh a word and mixed it with the world in every area of it. And then they've called that to be the real true new gospel. There is no new gospel. The gospel is the word of God. And therefore we have to serve God based off of what God has told us in his word. God said, I am the Lord thy God. I change not. And so he's not going to be altering his word to fit the, 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 the trends of the times that people are living. Now, God doesn't do that. What he what has to change? God doesn't change. We have to change. And if we don't change, then what's going to happen is you and I are going to fall victim to the spirit of pride. And this pride is going to cause us to have an eternal fall. This is what's going on. Let's get back into that verse and see what else is going on here. Oh, I'm telling you, the world is in a bad shape. Now, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Now, how are they going to depart from the faith? How are the Christians who are in the church 
What is going to make them stop receiving truth and accepting lies and then get so frustrated that they walk away from God? And then how is it that other people have uh, just stood off from the word and will never receive it? How is it that they have gotten to that place? They have gotten to that place because they have done this. Giving heed. Are you seeing this? Giving heed to seducing spirits. They are going to. Pull away from God, depart from the faith because they're giving heed to seducing spirits. Now, that giving heed means to take their attention and focus their attention on these seducing spirits and to hear these seducing spirits and to accept what these seducing spirits are saying and to receive it as reality in their lives. That is what it means to give heed. So they are actually turning away from God, pulling away from God and paying attention to Satan's spirits who are seducing spirits. We'll get into that. And then what happens is they begin to listen to them. Their attention is captivated by it. And then they begin to accept that message as truth. And they begin to alter their lives and live their lives in congruence with what these seducing spirits are teaching them. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? That's what they're. So this is how they in the world have departed from the faith because they are giving heed to these seducing spirits. Now, when it talks about seducing spirits, these are actually spirit beings. Fallen angels and demonic spirits are the ones that the devil is using to, 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 to get the people to give heed to them. Now, the seducing, that word means to be deceitful. It means to lie. It is a mind deceiver, a false teacher and a liar. So these spirits. So, so what is, is happening here? Satan has unleashed seducing spirits, false fallen angels and also demonic spirits. Watch this now. And these fallen angels and these demonic spirits are deceitful and they are liars and they are mind deceivers. Now, the problem with people that are in the earth is this. The people that are are living carnally and the people that are walking away from God and not obeying God and, and those that are standing off from God, they are living their lives according to how they think in their own minds and they're living by their own physical power and their own physical abilities. Now, the problem with that is this. How the devil is deceiving them is he's not using people to come into their lives and to change their minds. He's using spirits. Now, the people that are walking away from God and the people that are standing off from God have no power over these spirits because these spirits are powerful and they are powerful in the area of deceit. And they are powerful in the area of mind control and deception and mind deception. And so these people thinking that they are intelligent enough to make the right decision of how they're going to live their life on the earth and that they don't need God and they don't need to do it God's way because they have been captivated by demonic spirits and fallen angels who have spoken and given them lies and have deceived them in their minds to make them feel, think, and to receive information according to the way the devil wants them to receive it. So these seducing spirits are the spirits and the evil spirits in Satan's kingdom that he has unleashed in the world to actually deceive the minds and to lie to the people who are in the earth and to make them believe the lies of Satan and call the truth of God lies and the lies of Satan truth. And once that person gets that mindset and that stronghold becomes established in their minds, then they accept that as reality and they will fight you tooth and nail. Because now if you try to come and change their mind or give them something contrary to what they believe, they they accept, they re, they view you as the enemy. They view you as one that is attacking them and attacking their lives. And therefore, the stronghold that the devil 
devil has set up in them causes them not to receive the things of God. And one of the biggest strongholds, as we've said before, is pride. And it causes them to now back off from the things of God and not accept the things of God because they are being deceived by seducing spirits. Now, can you see why God has given the church apostles, true apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, because they come in the power of God and in the teaching anointing of God to watch this now affect the mentality of the people of God so that their minds will not be deceived. Their minds will not be changed. Their minds will not be altered. They not Their minds will not be lied to so that then the church's mind can be uh, taught to receive truth understand truth and to recognize deception that's why he has given us the ministry gifts to teach us and to train us and to take us into that position in God where we can hear and then we can discern because our ministry gifts have taught us and ministered to us and poured into us yes and even ministered the infilling of the Holy Spirit to us and and the releasing of the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit into our lives so that we can grow into the maturity and then the stature of the fullness of Christ where then we as Christians can begin to walk in the earth like Jesus because of the teaching and training that we have been given by our leaders through the direction of the Holy Ghost. Now that's how this is supposed to work but because other people refuse to accept the teaching of the ministry of the church they are prey and they have no power against these seducing spirits. Now, let's show you what these seducing spirits teach and what they do. Now, it says here that the people depart from the faith. They give heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, this is this is this is interesting here. They give heed to seducing spirits, demons and fallen angels who are deceivers, liars and false teachers and doctrines of devils. Now, this doctrine here, it, it talks about two, two things. And I want you to understand this. The doctrines talk about the doctrines of devils. So this is Satan's doctrine. And a doctrine is a teaching it is a truth or a teaching that is given by one who believes that their teaching is truth. All right. So it, whatever it is that they're being, whatever it is they're teaching, that's their doctrine. It is the the subject matter of how a person is to live. That's what a doctrine is. And it is received as truth. Now, also doctrine also means not only the subject matter of the teaching that is given, but it also means the manner or the style in which it is taught. So now we find that not only is the doctrine of what Satan is teaching has been given, which is seducing and is a lie, but then the manner in which it is taught or the manner in which he gets his demons and his fallen angels to teach them is also evil and deceptive. Now, what the devil does is he will give you his truth. The doctrines is the truth that somebody is trying to give to you and to make you believe that what they're telling you is truth. And so now the devil takes his doctrine, his words, his 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 remedy, his 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 prescription for life, which is a lie, but it's his doctrine. And he makes you believe that that is true. And the way that they make us believe that it is true by the style in which they teach us the doctrine. So we not only get the false doctrine, but then the style that it is presented to us is what causes us to receive it and to give heed to it. So what happens is the devil will take his doctrines. He can take his doctrines of music. And how he will present that doctrine to you is that he will present his music to you in a style that you like.
Oh, come on and listen to what I'm saying. So the devil will now see, oh, you like this kind of music or you like that kind of music. I'm going to present my doctrine to you in that kind of music so that you will give heed to it, desire it. And at the same time, as you are listening to it, you are giving over to that doctrine because I am infiltrating you with my lies and my deception, but I'm putting it through music because you like music. And so you're receiving the music, but you're also being deceived and, 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 and changed by the doctrine that the music is presenting to you. He also uses is another tactic called fear. What he does in fear is he actually intimidates and he begins to speak things concerning his doctrine with a condemnatory attitude, which then causes people to become so afraid of going against his teaching because they fear or they have been put in a place where they are terrified of the fact that if they don't receive that teaching and accept that teaching, then the devil is going to do something to them. So now we, we've got him soothing and smoothing with music as one way of teaching, then we've got him intimidating and bringing fear and, and torment and pressure to make people believe that teaching. Then we have what we call just outright lying and deception. And so what happens is now they, they, they deceive people and they just tell them outright lies and the people believe the lies because they have not been giving in to the spirit of truth, who is the Holy Ghost, to help them to discern whether something is a lie or truth. And therefore, the devil comes through lying, just outright lying or hypocrisy, and he begins to bring false truth and false doctrine into the lives of people and tell Telling them that it is truth when he knows that it is not truth. But the people are so mesmerized by the doctrine that they give in to it and accept it. And they go forward and they become mentally uh, challenged and mentally attacked and mentally uh, uh, constrained by the doctrines of these devils. And so Satan uses many different styles of teaching. He also uses styles of teaching where he will get his false doctrines to people through rejection. Once he has ministered his his doctrines of evil and wickedness because a person has been suffering rejection. See, he would what he does first. And one of his styles of teaching is he will he will attack you through temptations and trials and get you rejected by people in all shapes and forms. Uh, rejection at birth, rejection. Rejection in, in relationships, rejection from people that don't even know you until finally you have been filled with such a spirit of rejection that all you want to do is be accepted and you are searching for anything that would make you feel good and make you feel accepted. Once he gets you into that mindset, then he brings his doctrine and his lies that tells you that you are accepted when you accept this lie from the devil, when in essence is hypocritical. You're not being accepted he's giving that to you in order to you in order for you to receive it because he's playing on your right your 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 lack of confidence and because you have been rejected and therefore people will receive those messages from these demons and these fallen angels because they feel that they are so being soothed when in essence they're not being soothed at all they are being lied to through a hypocritical mind deceiving doctrine that is causing that person who's been opened up through rejection to receive that because they're wanting to be uh, uh, counted as being worthy. And this is how the devil is operating. He is manipulating people through all sorts and ways of, of, of living. And he's causing all of these different. See, these are doctrines of devils. And these spirits, they don't get tired. They continually browbeat and, 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 and prom, prom, promulgate these teachings over and over and over. And this is how Satan is getting people in the earth to, watch this now, turn away from God, 
remove themselves from God or just stand back from God and not receive anything that God is saying. This is how he's dealing in the earth. And this is how he's dealing in the world. And obviously it's working well because he has most people in the earth deceived and he has more people, most people in the earth giving heed to his spirit and his doctrines than they are giving heed to God's word and God's doctrine. But this is how the devil is doing. So when he's talking about the doctrines of devils, it's talking about not only the subject matter of the way of living that the devil is giving out as truth. That's the doctrine. But also it is talking about the style of how he presents that doctrine. So that's when we're talking about doctrines. So doctrines represent the subject matter and then how the subject is is presented and how it is presented affects how the person receives it. And this is how the devil is operating. And this is how he's moving. Now, look at what else this word says. I'm telling you, First Timothy chapter four is really breaking down what's going on in our society right now. Now, look else what it says in, 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 oh my goodness, this is something in verse two. It says, speaking lies, speaking lies in hypocrisy. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. What these spirits are doing is they know they're lying. Now, lies. Now, we have to understand a lie is what is the opposite of what the word of God says. You see, God's word is the standard of truth. Jesus said in John chapter six, thy word, O Lord, is truth. The word of God is truth. And therefore, anything that is contrary to the word is a lie. And so what the devil does is he has fashioned his whole life and career to coming against God's word and speaking the exact opposite of God's word. Remember in the Garden of Eden, when God had given Adam and Eve the commandment of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Remember God saying that? And then here comes the devil with his lie. Has God really said that? He didn't really mean you was going to surely die. He didn't really mean that. He just knows that the day that you eat that fruit, your eyes going to be open and you're going to be just like God, knowing good and evil. See how he lied on God? See, the devil always lies against the word of God. The word of God specifically said to Adam and Eve, if you eat of that fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. That's what God said. The devil said, he shall, you shall not surely die. Yes, yeah, they, they did surely die because God said they would. That was the truth. And here comes the devil with the lie. And then he says, because God knows that you'll become just like God, knowing good and evil. They were already like God. Them eating of that tree had nothing to do with them becoming like God because they were made in the image and likeness of God even before they even saw the tree. You need to understand the devil is a liar. And this is how he comes. So the Bible said they speak lies. So that anything that that is coming from the kingdom of darkness is going to be a lie, that which is contrary to the truth and is going to be spoken in hypocrisy. Now, hypocrisy means that you present something as if you believe it and that as you accept it, when in essence you don't believe it and you don't accept it, but you present it that way so that you can deceive the person that you're talking to to receive it and accept it so that you can gain control over them when you yourself don't accept it and you yourself don't believe it. And this is what has happened so many times in our lives. We are, they're called hypocrites. Their smile is actual, actually a frown and their frown is actually a smile. You see, and so uh, the hypocrite will come to you acting sad to get you to have sympathy when actually when you get sim have sympathy, they're really smiling on the on the other side that you can't see because they know they've got you or they come smiling and trying to get you to get happy and, and receive them and get joyful when in essence they've got a frown because they hate you and they're about to in, infiltrate you with doctrines of evil and wickedness. See, you see how the devil is working on us? See, this is why we need the ministry 
ministry gifts to keep us taught and trained and ministered to so that we can go and grow into a mature saint so that we can become able to handle the word of God skillfully and so that we'll be able to ward off these attacks. Because I'm telling you, the devil has the world wrapped up and tied up and tangled up. And the only thing that can get a person delivered from Satan's bondage is the life of Jesus Christ, the life of God. And this ought to let you know, if God had to die to break the power of sin and Satan's power over our lives, then Satan is nothing to play with. And you need to understand he is a deceiver. He is a liar and he was a liar from the beginning. He has no truth in him and you have no you have no ability to stand up against the devil in your own power. He is wiser than you. He's stronger than you and he's more evil than you and he is more manipulative manipulative than you and he's more convincing than you and you cannot stand under his attack you can only defeat the devil after you come into the kingdom of God after Jesus defeated him and then Jesus hands you his defeat by giving you Jesus's authority and as long as you walk in that authority the devil will stay defeated but when we stop walking in that authority we resurrect the devil's power even in our own Christian lives and he, he can start running havoc on our lives if we continue to allow him to I pray that you're getting this so they speak lies Things that are contrary to the word of God. And they speak them in hypocrisy. They don't believe it. They know it's not true, but they want you to think they believe it so that you can believe it. And then once you believe it, they got you hooked. This is how the word goes on. Now, look at what it also says about them. It says they speak lies. Watch this now in hypocrisy or hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Wow. They speak the lies in hypocrisy. How can they speak like that? How can they lie to you like that? How can they just know they're going to mess you up? Know they're going to tear up your life. How can they do that? I mean, they have no heart. Well, the reason why is because their conscience has been seared. Now, their conscience is this. It is, watch this now, it is that part of a person whose faculty distinguishes between right and wrong. It is a part of, it is a person's soul which distinguishes between right and wrong, and then it causes that person to choose the right and not the wrong. You understand? See, the conscience is that part of you that every one of us has because you all have a soul and you also have the ability to know the difference between right and wrong. Now, that difference, that, 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 that conscience that you have, that causes you to be able to know the difference between right and wrong is given to every human being. And so you know when you're wrong and you know when you're right, because inside of you, there is a spirit telling you that's not right, that's not wrong, or this is right, or this is wrong. And so that is your conscience. It's, it's part of your soul. And so it tells you whether something is right or wrong, and then it tells you to choose the right and not the wrong. But now notice that's what has been given to us. But it said their conscience has been seared with a hot iron. And that word seared, uh, it means to be cauterized. It means to be uh, burned because that word seared means to burn or to cauterize. Now, the way that we can see that is that uh, sometimes when a person, uh, especially uh, before modern medicine is now, you remember uh, there were times when people would get cut or they would get uh, uh, wounded and the way that they would close the wound, would be they would get a hot iron or they would get something very hot, burning fire, and then they would actually put it on the skin that had been cut open and then by it putting it on the skin it would actually burn the skin but it would also cause the skin to become hard and to become uh, 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 fused back together but it would be so painful but also what it did once that skin was was introduced to that extreme heat 
it, it damaged the nerves in the skin so that now that part that has been fused together by being cauterized or being, being burnt, by being burned, also now the nerves have been damaged so that now there were no feelings in that area. And uh, what we would call like scar tissue that has built up. And so now the nerves don't have that ending in that scar tissue so that that scar tissue doesn't have the feelings that the regular skin had. Well, this cauterized rising means that it has been seared their conscience has been so uh glow glassed over and 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 ironed over with evil with a hot iron that their conscience has been seared so that they no longer listen to this now no longer are affected by right and wrong that means that they can do you wrong and it doesn't even bother them anymore. It used to be, see, your conscience, what happens, remember now, your conscience is given to you that to know the difference between right and wrong and to make you choose right and not wrong. And if you chose wrong, you would feel bad about it. Or if you chose right, you would feel good about it. Well, when the conscience has been seared or when it has been cauterized or when the devil has put his fire and his evil wickedness on your conscience in such a way that he has consumed consistently kept burning into your conscience the evil and the wickedness until finally your conscience has become so so seared and so cauterized that it no longer has any feelings of right and wrong and it no longer has any uh uh, feelings of, of making you feel bad because you've done wrong. You really don't care anymore. You have become a psychopath. You have become one that can kill and not feel anything. You have become one that can can lie and not feel anything. You have become one that can that can abuse and not feel anything because why your conscience no longer is working. And the reason why is because it's devoid of feeling. It's devoid of the stimulus of God. Why? Because the devil has taken your conscience because you have given it over to him and he has burned out the glory of God in your soul. And he has burned out the ability to have empathy in your soul. And now you have become a person that is callous in your feelings. And once you become callous in your feelings, you only do things that satisfy you and satisfy the devil. And you could care less how it hurts other people. And there are people like that. They're called sociopaths. They're, they're people that they don't care how they hurt you. They don't care what they do to you. They will just destroy you. And they really take joy and pleasure out of it. And they have no feeling and no guilt. Their guilt and their conscience has been seared by that hot iron. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? This is what the devil is doing. Their conscience have been seared with a hot iron. And then the word of God shows us something else. The word of God says they forbid to marry and command to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth. So now what these spirits actually do is they not only go into the doctrines of the devils, but then they actually go into the things that God has instituted in his word which is they forbid to marry. So now there are doctrines that have been uh, placed and infiltrated into the body of Christ as well as into the world that you don't need to marry. Man and a woman, you don't need to marry. Why do you need to get married? Just in, enjoy each other, live together, and you don't need to get tied together with a contract. Just have a, a sexual relationship and a, a friends with benefits relationship. You don't need to marry. That's what's going on. And this is even going on in the church. And so we've got a lot of people who are Christians that will not get married. They just live together. And people that are in the world, they live together. They don't they don't go through the sanctity of marriage. They just live together, but they won't get married because that doctrine is forbidding them to get married. And it has told them the lie that you can enjoy the benefits of marriage and you're just like you're being married you just ain't got a piece of paper it's a whole world of difference because if it wasn't a world of difference then you'd go and get married the mere fact that you won't get married lets you know that there must be a difference between getting married and, and living up living with someone and there is no true commitment because when you're living with someone you can just up and walk away but in marriage you have to go through a divorce and therefore there there's much there's a different tie uh, in a relationship 
when a person gets married, forbidding to marry. Now, this forbidding to marry. Now, I want you to understand the devil's lie is against God's word. So that means that when God's word says marry, we have to find out what does this scripture mean when it says forbidding to marry? Notice what it said, forbidding to marry. Now, the word of God teaches that marriage is between a man and a woman, which makes that man a husband and the woman the wife. So that's the word of marriage in the Bible. Now, when the Bible says that these doctrines of devil have devils have taught people to forbid to marry, what they're actually saying is they're forbidding you to marry the way that God says marriage is. So what Satan's doctrines have done is they have said, no, men can marry men and women can marry women. They are forbidding them to marry. So in, and this goes in toward the homosexual lifestyle. So it is forbidding a man, the homosexual lifestyle forbids a man to marry a woman, but it, 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 it allows a man to marry a man and it allows a woman to marry a woman. Now this marriage is not, listen to what I'm saying now, this marriage may be accepted in the laws that are created in the world, but it is not accepted in God's law because God's law forbids it. So now what they are doing is they're coming against the law of God, man plus wife, man plus woman coming together in marriage becomes husband and wife. Now they're saying that's not true. The real marriage of God is man plus man becomes husband and husband, wife plus wife becomes wife plus wife. And so what, what, what woman plus woman becomes wife and wife. That's not the law of God. And so this is how they forbid to marry. They are taking doctrines of the devils. Churches and whole denominations of churches have accepted this lifestyle and have begun to marry homosexual people in the churches, which is an abomination unto God. And again, I'm not coming against homosexuals. I'm coming against the sin of homosexuality. Every person that is a homosexual homosexual is precious and God loves them and we love them, but we know that they're bound up and they're being deceived by the devil because the, the end result of the homosexual lifestyle will cause that person to go to hell. We don't want you to go to hell. We want you to be born again so that you can escape hell. You can be delivered. But you're going to have to receive the truth because the deception of the devil is to get you to to forbid you to walk the way God wants you to walk so that you can then obey Satan and die and go to hell. This is what is going on. Then the devil also comes back and he brings this as well. Look at what else he brings. And he also teaches about abstaining from meats. Oh, my goodness, which God hath created. Notice the meat is that God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So now not only has he gotten into the marriage, but now he's gotten into the food. Now, notice what happens here. Now, this is interesting. Look at this. This is very interesting. Are y'all ready for this? Watch this now. In the garden. What did Satan attack? In the garden, when Adam and Eve were there, Adam and Eve were what? Married. So when he came against them, he came against marriage. Then what did he come against the marriage with? With what they could eat. Come on, somebody. Now let's look at this verse. What does the devil do now? He uses the same thing that he used to deceive Adam and Eve he uses it on people today. He uses it on a church and he uses it on unsafe people to watch this now to come against marriage and to come against their food. Isn't that amazing? See, the devil knows that this works. It worked on the perfect man and the perfect woman. So, you know, it's going to work on the imperfect man and the imperfect woman. This is how Satan has come. So what we find now, we're about to close for today, but what we find now is in these last days, Satan is using fallen angels and he's using demonic spirits to speak lies to people 
and doctrines of devils, deceptions and lies and hypocrisy for the express purpose of getting people to withdraw and to pull away from God and others to stand off and reject God and not even receive God. And he comes at them and he even comes at them by coming against marriage and how they eat food. This is what's going on in the world. And they are so evil that they have no conscience of right. And therefore, they have no empathy and they have no mercy. And this is what the, the Bible is trying to get you and I to see. Do you see what kind of world we're living in? This is the kind of world that we're living in where people have no empathy. They, they, they speak lies and hypocrisy. Look at the condition that has happened in this country, the United States of America. Last year, the man who was president of the United States of America knew that the coronavirus was deadly, vicious, and would kill and destroy many, many people. Even with that knowledge, he would go on national television and tell everyone the lie, the hypocritical lie, speaking the lie in hypocrisy, a doctrine of the devils, that it is nothing more than the flu and it'll be gone and it'll be gone in a few days and it's nothing to worry about when in essence he knew it was and because of that because of the lies and the hypocrisy over a half a million people in a year have succumbed to that deadly disease and the economy of the United States has succumbed to the attacks of those lies and people's minds and whole, listen to what I'm saying, people's minds and whole religious views have been changed because of the lies and the hypocrisy that has gone forth from the administration, the past administration. I want you to understand this is what's happening. See, this is vital in this right now. And I want you to understand this is how the devil operates. We see this now like never before, the lies, the hypocrisy of saying that the election was stolen when the election was not stolen and that the election was the most, the smoothest run election ever in the history of this country. And yet because of the lies and hypocrisy that were told from the administration, thousands of people attacked the Capitol killing police officers, wounding police officers, going after the vice president, going after the speaker of the house based off of lies and hypocrisy. Do you see God's word has prophesied to this, that this would happen and you seeing it played out on the news every single day and the lies and hypocrisy are still being perpetrated even after uh, the previous administration has been voted out of office, yet those that are in his party are now perpetrating the same lies coming against the American people. Now they're bringing laws and stopping people from voting and, and, and curbing people's voting rights, yet they say they're Americans, yet they say that they're Christians, Yet they say they're conservative Christians, yet they're bringing doctrines of lies and doctrines of the devil and coming against denying people the right of vote, the right to vote. Do you see this happening right in front of your eyes? Don't be deceived by the devil. Don't let the devil take you by your mind and infiltrate you with doctrines of devils and, and you receive those lies of hypocrisy. Listen to the true apostles, the true prophets, the true evangelists, the, the true pastors and the true teachers. We're going to be talking about the false prophets and how in the church, the devil infiltrated the church over this past year and how many prophets, the so-called prophets turned into false prophets and how they gave false prophecy and have messed up the, the, the religious uh, walk that many Christians have with God because they have believed lies of those that have been given false prophecy being used by the devil. But this is the, the, the scenario, the condition of the world 
We need only the only thing that can save us from this because the devil is so adept at lying is that we have to have the word of God, which is truth. And once we have the word, then we can walk in the truth. Well, I pray that this word has been a blessing to you today. Judgment must first begin at the house of God. Can you see now how Jesus is going to judge? And here Jesus died and went to hell, became sin and did all that suffering. And then folks are going to act like this. Do you think Jesus is going to have mercy at the judgment seat? I don't think so. No, he's having mercy now by letting them live and giving them a chance to change. But once they close their eyes in death, it's all over. And the judgment shall fall. So we'll continue next week with judgment must first begin at the house of God. And we're going to continue to see how the world is in a condition that the devil has placed it in. And those that are in the world that are not under the protection of God are walking in the deception. And they're going to pay the price in the final judgment. Don't you be caught up in that. You as a Christian, you are not exempt from being caught up in this. You better get in the word and you better pray. And if you're at a church where the leaders of that church are compromising the word, you better run out of that church as fast as, as if it was a burning, flaming building and get out of there before you get burned up in the fire of judgment. Walk away and go and find a place that will teach you the word and teach you the truth so that you can obey God and serve the Lord. Well, praise God. I want you to be blessed this rest of this Sunday. Enjoy Jesus. Enjoy his word. Walk in his power. And we're going to have a wonderful time in the word. We'll see you next Sunday, which will be Resurrection Sunday. And we're going to be having a communion service as well on our Resurrection Sunday as we continue to teach judgment must first begin at the house of God. Have a blessed Sunday. Have a blessed week and walk in the power of God. Remembering these things, Jesus said to us in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And remember this, the devil is defeated. God is exalted and Jesus is Lord. See you next week in Jesus name.